Today, by popular request, we're going to talk about OneNote. The one thing you need to know up front is that there are multiple versions of OneNote, and depending on the one you select, you may see different features. What I'm going to focus on today is the desktop app, and then weave in a little bit of the web app, and I'll point out the differences as we go. So let's jump on in and check it out. We're gonna get started by taking a look at the OneNote desktop app. And the first thing we're gonna do is talk about the organizational structure. So when you open your OneNote, you are in your notebook. And the notebooks are organized by sections and pages. So here at the top, I've already created a section for frequently asked questions, and we have an untitled page. So in my notebook, what I do is I organize my FAQs by topic. Now what I'm going to do is quickly add a page for each application that I am tracking FAQs for. I have several more in my real OneNote, but these few that I've added here should be enough for our demonstration. What we have so far is one FAQ section with several pages organized by application. If I want to add additional sections, all I have to do is click on this plus sign at the top and select Create New Section. And OneNote is going to automatically try to color code your different tabs for you. Now all you have to do is type into the tab to give it a name. And one of the things I do is I keep my meeting notes in OneNote. Then I can add additional pages for each type of meeting that I am tracking. You can keep adding as many sections or as many pages as you need for your OneNote. Now let's take a really quick look at how to navigate around the OneNote interface. When you first come in here, the ribbon is collapsed and you can just see the different tabs at the top of the screen. When I click on the Home tab, for example, the ribbon will expand. And if I go all the way over to the right-hand side of the screen, I can move the check mark from Show Tabs Only to Always Show Ribbon. I personally prefer to see my ribbon full size at the top. It's up to you how you want to look at your OneNote. I also like to show my quick access toolbar. And then I can customize the toolbar by adding additional commands at the top, such as undo and redo. Before we start adding content, I'd like to show you one other thing that I customized a long time ago in OneNote. If you go to File and Options, and then check under the Display Settings, I have Page Tabs appear on the left checked. When you first set up OneNote, this may be deselected, and what it does is it puts the tabs on the right-hand side of the screen. Personally, I didn't like that, so instead I moved all of my tabs to the left-hand side of the screen. Now let's take a look at how to start adding content to our OneNote. From the Home tab, you can see that you have several standard formatting options. You can also add headers using the Styles section. One of the tools that I use frequently is Tags. So for example, I can click the To Do tag, and here are a few simple examples of what I might enter into a to-do list. There are all kinds of different tags that you can use, and if you don't find one that suits your purpose, when you're in the desktop app, you can go in and you can customize a tag. Click on New Tag, and you can give it a name. And then I will click on the dropdown under Symbol so that I can choose if I want to add a checkbox or some kind of symbol. Maybe I just wanna mark it as a yellow square just so I can make it stand out. And you can even choose a highlighter color as well. And then I will click OK. And then click OK one more time. And now in my tag section, you will see my customized send to supervisor tag. I like these customized tags, especially when they are color coded to things that I do outside of OneNote. It helps the information to stand out on the page and keeps me organized. Though the one thing you do need to keep in mind is that while you can use customized tags in the desktop app, you will not be able to use them in the web app. 
You may be wondering why I keep pointing out these differences, and the reason for that is I know that a lot of people are still teleworking and they only have access to the web applications when they're working from their personal devices at home. Now that we have a few tags, if you click on the Find Tags icon, you now have the option to search by different tag types. Now keep in mind, this isn't just searching the SharePoint page that we're on, it's searching the entire OneNote. So as I start adding more information to this notebook, more tags will populate in this right-hand column. If you go down to the bottom of the search pane, you can see that it's set to this notebook by default, but you can change it to page, section, all notebooks, etc. The next thing that we're going to look is how to create a task that will synchronize to Outlook. Click the Outlook Tasks button and select when you want it to be due. So for example, let's say tomorrow. A new text box is added to my OneNote screen and then I can begin typing in the task that I want. Now let's navigate to Outlook and go to the bottom of the screen and select the little clipboard icon for tasks. You can see that I now have a task that is due tomorrow and I can click the OneNote link and it will take me back to my OneNote to see the details of the task. Like many of the M365 applications, OneNote and Outlook are sharing information back and forth. Speaking of sharing information back and forth, our next option is the ability to email this OneNote page. If I click on this, my Outlook will open up and then I can select who I want this email to go to. Not only does this keep me organized, but it helps me to share information with my colleagues without having to give them access to my entire notebook. Another very useful feature is the ability to insert meeting details. So I know that on Monday morning, I have a stand-up meeting with my team. I can go to meeting details and it shows me that I don't have any meetings for today. So I can choose meeting details for another day navigate to Monday and select my standup meeting and insert the details. And what I have here is information about this meeting. We can see the title, the date and time, a link to the actual Outlook item, as well as the attachment that I had in the meeting invite. One of the things that I like to do is use the checkbox in the participant section to mark off who attended. So for example, Nestor can't make this meeting, so I won't put a check next to his name, and this will remind me to send him the notes after the meeting is over. This feature can save you a lot of time because rather than typing in information into two different places, all you have to do is set your meeting details, pull it into OneNote, and you're good to go. The next feature we're gonna talk about is how to copy text from a picture. So I've dropped in a PNG file from a knowledge management project that I'm working on. I can't make any changes to the PNG file, but I want to remove a couple of the bullet points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to right click on the PNG file, and then I'm going to select copy text from picture. I will move my cursor to another spot on the canvas, click Control-V on my keyboard, and that puts in the exact same text. Now all I have to do is identify what I wanna keep and what I want to remove. As you may have noticed, I added several more tabs and pages to my OneNote so that you can see what it looks like as you start to add more information. Now that I've added more to my OneNote over time, I realize that my meeting notes need to be structured in a different way. So what I can do is I can right click on the meeting notes and I can say new section group. I'm going to name this new section meetings and then I'm going to drag and drop the meeting notes tab into the new meeting section group. From here, what I can do is create new sections at the top of the screen that represents each type of meeting that I attend and keep notes for. Now I will go back to the original meeting notes pages, right click and say move or copy. Then I can take the information from the stand up and move it to its new stand up tab. And then from here on out, every stand up meeting will get its own page under the stand up tab, which I typically label by date. 
Let's take a break from the desktop app for a minute and take a look at OneNote on the web and notice how the information that I have been creating from the desktop app is all feeding right here into the OneNote web app. You can see the different meeting section and all of the different tabs below. But the one thing that you do need to keep in mind is while you can see these new tabs, you cannot create section groups from the web application. While we're here, let's take a look at how we can share our OneNote with members of our team. Using the sharing menu, I can type in my supervisor's name and then I can select her from the list. I can put a message to let her know why I'm sharing with her and notice I'm giving her edit permissions. From there, all I have to do is click send. And now my supervisor has full access to my OneNote. Now that I've shared my OneNote, I realize that I have one specific section, the point of contact list, that might contain some sensitive information. So what I can do is I can password protect that particular section. From the review tab, I'm going to click on the password protect icon and a pane will open up on the right hand side of the screen. As you can see, you can set a password or remove the password if one already exists. Before you set the password, scroll down to the bottom of the screen and review the tips. The one I'm going to point out to you here is when you password protect your section, you will not be able to search for the information within that section unless you unlock the section first. In this case, we're talking about personal information, so I'm fine with that. I'm going to scroll back up to the top of the screen and select set password. Please take note of the caution in the box that if you lose or forget your password, OneNote cannot recover your data. I'm going to click OK to accept the password I've chosen. Scroll over to the right hand side of the screen and you can see POC list is password protected. You can always change your mind and select remove password. Enter your chosen password and then select OK. Now everyone on my team has access to the POC list. The last thing we're going to look at is how to use links within your OneNote to create a table of contents. I'm going to admit that after I've added so much information to my OneNote, I can't always remember where I put things. So what I can do is I can right click on this table of contents tab that I have created and I can select link. I can search through all of my notebooks, but I'm going to limit it to just the notebook for this demonstration. First, I'm going to pull in the admin information section, and then I'm going to quickly add in all of the pages to the admin information section by repeating the process of right clicking and selecting the information that I want. You also have the option of bringing in just a specific piece of a page by using a paragraph link. So for example, I'm on the knowledge management page and I'm going to right click within the design template section of this page and copy a link to the paragraph. Then I can go back to the table of contents section and paste in the link to the design template. And if I click on it, it quickly jumps me to just that information that I need. You can get creative and use the links in different ways. This is just one of my favorite examples. This video has been an introduction to some of the features that I use most often in OneNote, but if you scroll through the tabs, you will see that there are many more options that you can use. I hope you'll take a look at more of the OneNote options and leave me a comment below and let me know what your favorites are. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.